What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, video, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's happening with the economic calendar thus far, especially as we have more data coming out. Not to mention some big news involving Teslas, we're seeing some headlines coming out about their deliveries, not to mention the prices. But before I break the doubles information, before I talk about the share price of Tesla and give you guys a quick market update, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Mumu with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon in just three days. Anyways, looking at uh, Tesla right now, you guys can see that Tesla is very, very range-bound. We have resistance at 177.5, also a little bit higher than that if we do try to break through that. And also, at support, we're trying to hold 175 point eight right now at our 200 ema so as of right now tesla's just been, go been going back and forth and back and forth kind of stuck just like spy spy is doing something very similar as it's also stuck within its range but honestly there's not really a whole lot going on with these charts but i want to talk about some news that came out break down some very important things don't forget that spy has a lot of puts expiring for the end of the day so we'll see if that causes anything but for tesla we're seeing a lot of headlines coming out so there's some news coming out that the uh xiaomi i may be saying that that wrong because i don't really speak mandarin but uh, basically this company is releasing an electric car that's four thousand dollars cheaper than the model 3 as the price wars heat up and this is a very important article not because i'm i'm trying to criticize tesla or say anything like that because the thing you have to remember is that even if there are cheaper cars in china than that of tesla Tesla is looked at as a very, very high quality brand over there, and there's still demand for it, Teslas. Uh, it's not as high as what we've seen in previous years looking at the Chinese sales data, uh, but this is actually still an important headline because there's a lot of very fierce competition over there, and Tesla could be incentivized to try to do something about that. Now, there is a big price war going on. We're seeing a lot of incentives for people to buy cars around there, but one thing that is worth noting is that uh, China has these massive comparative advantages at manufacturing and kind of like supplying their own people with their own cars because it makes things a lot more affordable for them and it also helps them uh, with different things such as like saving on other factors like that. So for a Tesla, with the Model Y and the Model 3 being very, very popular cars, the Model 3 in particular, I just want to call out that yes, Teslas will be a little bit more expensive than some competitors over there. And the question is, what will Tesla do about this? Now, Tesla has been cutting prices quite a bit in China and also other places around the world. And there's a lot of incentives for people to buy cars over there. But Tesla could continue to try to like uh, take other steps now to just maintain this competition. There could be more news coming out about this over the next couple of weeks, so just be careful. And then with deliveries coming out next week, we're going to find out more information about how their sales looked in China as well. So just know... This is no surprise whatsoever. We're going to continue to see more and more news about these different companies, uh, such as like Xiaomi or many others out there that are selling other cars, which are a lot more affordable. And it's going to continue to happen. It's not necessarily killing Tesla in a sense. It is adding to more competition, but it's something that's completely normal. So it shouldn't be anything that kind of like phases you or surprises you. There is still brand loyalty there in China, and I still think that Tesla will get a decent amount of sales. Yes, their sales are not as good as before, of course. Uh, compared to last year but we'll see how things go now this also kind of like uh you know, you know helps me transition to this point about the delivery estimates they're crazy right now they're absolutely insane because i've been looking at these i'm seeing that uh although tesla's deliveries have been growing roughly at about 50 percent per year that's not going to be maintained according to elon musk it's not realistic to be talking about percentages like that but nonetheless uh when people are talking about these high estimates, you have to remember that Tesla has very high expectations from Wall Street and these different analysts. And right now, when it comes to what we're expecting for deliveries, it's just all over the place. Some people are saying Tesla should be giving us 484,000 deliveries. Uh, people are saying that it should be close to that. Others are saying it's going to be a big range between 425,000 to 475,000. Others are saying 420 to 480,000. That's that's kind of like related to this. Last time we got 484,000. Now we're saying uh, we should have a big range like that. Other people are saying 450,000 is the most likely estimate. It's just all over the place. I'm also seeing estimates at uh, 458,000. It's all over the place. Uh, once again, I do agree with the point that Electric is making here, though. Anything below 450,000 would not be the best for Tesla, but anything close to 420,000 would be pretty awful. 
If Tesla does over like 460,000, 470,000, that could actually be decent for them. So let's just be very careful. Do not forget that Tesla had the arson attack in Berlin and other things that affected them. Slowing demand in China is also affecting them. So there's a lot of different factors across Europe and the US affecting this. So we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing from these analysts, which are talking about deliveries. So what is Tesla doing? Honestly, from a share price perspective, from a technical perspective, Tesla is kind of stuck right now. We have resistance right now at 177.6 around that area. We have support right now at 175.89. It's going back and forth and back and forth pretty much all day. And there's not really much going on with it. It's not the most fun to trade. The same thing could be said about SPY. SPY is actually uptrending a bit, showing some life, but it's still very, very choppy. Not the best for trading as well because there are lots of puts expiring, which are zero to expirations. Lots of them are expiring today, and those market makers are doing, are doing what they can to kind of like hurt those options. So it's part of why we're very choppy. SPY has supported 523, resistance at 523.5 and then 524. As of right now, it is uptrending a bit, but it's not super strong. It's not pushing very hard. It's very choppy, very slow, if anything. For the QQQ, it's the same thing, basically. On the QQQ, you guys could see that this thing has been very sideways. Resistance is very close to just under 446. Support is currently at about 444. And also this white trend line here around 444.8. So what is it doing? Up, down, up, up, down, up, back and forth, back and forth. It's very, very boring. So I'm going to be waiting until like power hour to see if we get a big move or any, anything else that happens. For Apple... It's looking relatively weak. I did call this out in the morning. I said that Apple had potential to break up, but it failed so far. And if we lost support at 172.5, I expect this to come down a bit. Uh, I was saying that Apple wanted to break out. It was trying to break above the 200 DMA, but it was kind of failing, looking kind of lackluster. Now it's coming down to this imbalance, uh, exactly as predicted, coming back down. Now it's just trying to base as well around 170.8. Trending sideways here. If we lose that support, we could get closer to 170, but it's still very flat. It's not really worth trading. NVIDIA had a very, very interesting move. So I told you all that NVIDIA was kind of tight. We're still within this range right here. You guys can see we have resistance at 908, support around 900 and 892. And we've been going back and forth and back and forth. NVIDIA is kind of stuck within this range. Not a whole lot's going on with it. Uh, just a couple more. I'm going to be kind of quick. Super Micro was talking about how if we broke past or if we broke out of this resistance, we could be pushing for 1100. We get very close to it. We did get a pop near that in the pre-market and it came back down. We're still we're currently at 1,000, kind of shopping around our EMAs at 1,020. So it may just continue to remain sideways. Uh, there is this downtrend, so we'll have to see how it goes. But that's all I'm seeing for the time being. Rivian trying to bounce. Uh, it's testing our 200 EMA for now, but be careful, guys. We could get a rejection later. Uh, just a few more meta, just very flat. It was trying to break out. Now it's back to testing this trend line. 490, the 490 zone is basically where our support is. If we lose that, we could get closer to four. Uh, if we lose where we currently are, essentially, we could continue to drop towards like 485. 494 is resistance. Otherwise, we're still kind of stuck. And then there's Amazon, which is also stuck as well. Pushed up to 181 exactly as predicted. Now it's coming back down to 180. Might trade a little sideways here. Uh, you could argue there's like a cup like structure forming, but there's not really much going on with it. Uh, so the market's kind of boring right now. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on. SPY is showing some strength, though. Tesla's still kind of range-bound. So I'd say give the market some time, and we'll have to see how things go. Well, right now, Tesla's trying to push a little bit, but like I said, it's still not that strong. It's not like, like that fun to trade or anything like that. Uh, it could push a little bit now that we're trying to hold above 177.5, but we've got to try to hold above this resistance. If Tesla could hold this, it could try to push a little bit, but it's still not that great to trade. So I still hold my same point. Not the best. Anyways, that's it for the video. Uh, I'm going to thank you all so much for listening. Please have a great day. Tesla right now, it's pushing just a bit. But like I said, not the best for trading. So just be patient. Uh, I'll see you guys in just a couple of hours for another update. Uh, take care. Uh, Tesla to the moon because the long term is very bright. And peace out.